Welcome to QLab TV. What are fade cues? Why fade things? The topic of this video. <laughs> You've come to the right place. Uh, hi, I'm Chris. And I'm also Chris. And we are here to talk about what is a fade cue in QLab. It is one of the most fundamental things in QLab. It can trip you up a little bit if you don't understand what's basically going on. So we're gonna cover that and give you some examples. Uh, the most fundamental piece of what a fade is is it changes a value from one thing to another. Uh, a, a thing like the audio level of a cue is, is somewhere. It is either playing at full volume or it's silent and you wanna change it to something else. Well, a fade cue is how you do that. Uh, Chris, you want to give us some examples? If you're accustomed to video editors or traditional DAWs, uh, digital audio workstations, you might be accustomed to seeing automation curves. So if you go to the time and loops tab of an audio cue and check integrated fade, you'll see something that looks a lot like an automation curve in another program, and it behaves a lot like an automation curve. So you can say, uh, the beginning of this cue sounds a little abrupt, and I want it to enter a little bit more smoothly. You can add a point to your curve and make it so that the audio slides in a little bit more gradually. So I'll run that again. And that changes it so that instead of the main level starting all the way at zero or at full volume, it fades in as you see in this curve. But what if you don't know the timing in advance? QLab is very commonly used in live shows and you don't always know when you want audio to fade in or fade out, or you don't know when you want a video to appear on the screen uh, because the timing is based so much on performance. So one of the most fundamental pieces of what makes QLab QLab is that we take that integrated fade, that idea of changing the volume level or something like that, and pull it out into a separate queue of its own so that you can have it, an individual queue that can run at whenever you tell it to run to make a change. So you have that flexibility to react to what's happening live. So we've made a little brief demo to show a few different ways that you can use fades. We have a beautiful photograph taken by the other Chris uh, and added some words on top of it to celebrate its beauty along with fades to show you how you can uh, fade in video slash text slash camera cues. For example, you can fade in opacity. So this cue, the wow cue, started with opacity zero, so it was invisible. And then we ran a fade cue on it. We checked this checkbox, set the opacity to 100 in the geometry tab, and the cue faded in to 100% opacity. Key piece there to, to notice was that the cue started somewhere. It started at 0% opacity, and we used the fade cue to take it somewhere else. So the cue is currently running. You can't see it. And now I run the fade, and over the course of the fade cue's duration, which was three seconds, the opacity changes from 0%, which was what the setting was on the cue, to 100%, which is the setting in the fade. Can you fade other things, Chris? I can fade so many other things. For example, wow. This cue, so pretty, is set to have scale zero, meaning you can't see it because it's too small, and its uh, position is set to be in the center of the screen. But you can't see that because we've already put it so that it's invisible. But if I run the fade, or I make it full size and put it to the corner of the screen, voila. So that was a fade of two things at one time. Exactly. That was a fade of both the location of the text this translation property to fade it down to the corner, and simultaneously a fade of the scale to bring it up to full scale of one. Exactly right. Let's try one more. We've also made it possible to fade video effects. So this cue is starting out with what's called a Gaussian blur. So you'll pretty much not see the cue because it's gonna be so blurry. And then when we run the fade, we change the blur amount to so that it looks like you're sort of clarifying or, just, or getting into focus. And that's fading a video effect. To do that, in the fly cue, we added the Gaussian blur effect, set its radius to very high, so this is what it looks like with a zero radius, 
and then it's and then it gets blurrier and blurrier till we get to 100. And then we made a fade cue, checked the radius button, and then set the radius to zero. So you can see this effect one more time. Fly. 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 We have one more text cue that we haven't faded yet. It's just a normal text cue it that appears out of nowhere. Pops right on screen there. Let's fade something about it. What do we want to fade? I was thinking that we could make it sort of like a like an announcement that it's a, that it's a verb. Oh, kind of like, like yep. alert, alert. Yeah, exactly. So I was thinking maybe we could uh, start by fading opacity using a fade cue. And so I'm going to make a fade cue by clicking the fade button up top while the burb cue was selected. Because it was on the burb cue when I clicked that button, QLab assumes that you wanted to fade that cue. Now, there's an X next to the fade cue because we haven't selected what we want to fade yet. That's normal. We want to go to the geometry tab in this case because I want to fade opacity. So QLab doesn't assume that this is any particular kind of fade, right? Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't know what we want to change, so it says, look, you haven't told me what to change, so this, this cue doesn't do anything yet. You gotta tell me what I'm gonna do with this cue. Exactly. Now, I want this cue to end at 100% opacity, but I also want it to look like it's flashing. So I was thinking that maybe I need to start the cue at 0% opacity like I did before, but I want it to have some pizzazz on its way to full opacity. To do that, I'm gonna to try to use a curve. We have a few different options, but I'm gonna use the linear curve in this case because it makes it really easy to draw in some pizzazz, some pizzazz which I'm gonna demonstrate now by putting in sort of some, some waves, which I think should make it look like the word burb is pulsing. Let's see, yeah, yeah. And then it ends at full opacity. A cool thing about fade cues is that I really like that effect, but I also sort of want to do the same thing to the scale of the cue. I think it might be fun to oh. start the burb cue, maybe not completely at its smallest size, but somewhere in between, mm -hmm. so that it grows while, while it's coming in. Let's see what happens. So that same curve is going to apply both to the opacity and the size? Exactly oh. right. Okay. And even though the opacity is starting at one amount and the size is starting at a different amount, because fade cues are going between your start position and your end position, it can scale those positions using the same curve. Let's see what it looks like. Using yeah, the power of math. The power of math. I don't know what that did. Take a look at the fade and their geometry. I don't think you set it to actually do the scale. Nice catch. Okie dokie. Let's so watch it one more time. Tell it. We also want to fade the scale. Okay. So we I'm gonna run it. it again. There we go. Whoa. Woo, 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 woo. Now, if I wanted to use different curves for those two properties, what do I do? In that case, you would use two different fade cues, and if you want to run them at the same time, the easiest way is to put them in a timeline group. So I can break up different changes into as many fade cues as I want. Exactly. And I can run many different fade cues on the same target. How do they decide which one is in control? Well, I believe that whichever fade cue starts last takes over control over the piece that it's over fading. the piece that it's fading. So, if I wanted to add one more fade uh, to fade burb, I'm going to select burb. and I'm gonna change it to only affect scale. And I'm gonna make it make burb very big. Scale is selected. If I run burb again, and my first fade is running, beautiful, I'm gonna make it run for a while. Let's say 10 seconds, just so I have time to show this effect. Oops, I have to stop it one more time. Okay, the first cue is running for 10 seconds, but now I'm gonna run this fade, which should take over the scale. 
Sorry. So That's you can big. see it's still pulsing in its opacity, uh -huh. but the scale changed based on my new fade. So my little building blocks of changes add as many as I want to make my path of changes through my design. Exactly. And then comply to audio levels, video geometry, audio effects, video effects, just about anything that you might want to change, you can change with a fade cube. It's one of the most important tools in QLab. Absolutely. We love fades. Welcome to QLab TV, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>